Our last lesson, our lesson for our sermon today is from the New Testament, from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Listen to the kind of surprising way that the Apostle Paul talks about Jesus' cross. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. This is God's word. Friends of Jesus, Christianity is foolish. Do you ever hear people talk like that? Here's some examples. Someone once said, the word God is nothing more than the expression and product of weak men. In other words, God is just an invention of weak human beings. Do you know who said that? Albert Einstein. You say, huh? Huh? He was a pretty smart guy, wasn't he? Here's another one. The history of the Gospels is so defective and doubtful that it's vain to even inquire into it. In other words, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that tell us about Jesus. The Gospels, they're, they're so doubtful and defective, so foolish, it doesn't even, it's not even worth it to look into. You know who said that? Thomas Jefferson. And then Thomas Jefferson actually cut out of his Bible every miracle that Jesus did, including the resurrection. It's foolish. Why would he say that? Why would intelligent people think that Christianity is foolish? Maybe we should think about what Christianity teaches The Bible teaches that every single human being is by nature sinful from the moment we're conceived. How does that sound today? Foolish. The Bible teaches that God himself entered into the womb of the Virgin Mary and he was born as a human being. How does that sound today? Foolish. The Bible teaches that God saved the world by being executed on a cross. How does that sound? Foolish. The Bible says that after he died, Jesus raised himself from the dead three days later. How does that sound today? Foolish. I mean, haven't we moved on from all that? I, mean, I can see why people long ago they needed religion, they needed gods long ago, but haven't we progressed further than that? Haven't we moved past all of these legends and myths? I mean, look at what we human beings are accomplishing. We have Wi-Fi. We have cell phones. We have self-driving cars. We even invented football. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? Sin? God? Having to save the world? Is that foolish? Do you hear people say that? But maybe even sometimes you, you yourself start to think that. To start today, I want you to realize that that's nothing new. The idea that we should move on from the foolishness of God is nothing new. 
Already 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul wrote, The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Already 2,000 years ago, Paul says that the message that Jesus died on the cross for the, the sins of the world, it was received in two very different ways. To those who were perishing, to those who didn't believe, it's foolishness. To those who were being saved, to those who did believe, it was the power of God. This is exactly how God planned it. God decided that people are not going to be saved by our wisdom. Instead, people are saved by faith in Jesus. In our lesson, Paul quotes a verse from the Old Testament, way back from the prophet Isaiah. God said, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. God decided long ago that he was not going to save people through their wisdom. In fact, God decided that he would save the world in a way that's totally contrary to human wisdom. God was going to save the world in a way that seemed foolish so that salvation would all be by faith. If the most intelligent people in the world think Christianity is foolish, don't be surprised because Christianity isn't about how intelligent you are. It's all by faith. This is so hard. I don't know about you, but I, I can be easily impacted by what other people say. To hear the, the wise people of today make fun of what the Bible teaches, it's hard, isn't it? Even makes you wonder for yourself, maybe, maybe they're right. Instead, maybe this is the question we should ask. Who, who really is wise? Apostle Paul says, where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? We human beings, we do kind of an ironic thing. We set our own standards for what it is to be wise. And it always changes, right? It's always changing. We set our own standards for what it is to be wise. And then we call ourselves wise based on our own standards. Is that what we do? Does that work in the eyes of God? No. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Just think of some examples. Some examples of what is touted as human wisdom today. We human beings in America, we are so wise that we've decided that when there's a little body growing inside of a woman, and when that little body has a human head and human hands and a human heart, we know exactly what that little body is not. Right? What is it not? A human being. Right? We've reached this level of wisdom that this, this little body, it has a human head and human hands and human heart, but we are so wise that we know that it's not a human being. It's just a fetus. Right? We shouldn't even use the word baby. It's not what it is. Because we're wise. You know what God says? It's foolishness. We human beings, we, we've learned so much that, that we now know that every living thing on earth evolved over billions of years from one tiny organism that somehow came to life all on its own on a planet that formed itself over billions of years. Isn't that brilliant? Right? We are wise. What does God say? It's foolishness. Right? The human beings in, in America were progressing so far that we now know that marriage is just an old repressive tradition. I mean, do you realize that it's so much better for people not to have to commit to anybody? Right? Just free sex with whoever you want to and I mean, let's be honest, kids, they don't need a mother and father. Families are so last century, right? We're wise. What does God say? It's foolishness. Has not God made foolish 
the wisdom of this world? Can you see that there's this irreconcilable difference between human wisdom and God's wisdom? And here's maybe the greatest example. It's going to sound simple. But this is maybe the greatest example of the difference between our wisdom and God's wisdom. What we human beings like to say is, it doesn't matter what you believe. Just be good. Just be kind. Just be tolerant. That's all that life is about. You hear that all the time, right? It sounds so simple. Just what is that saying? All that life is about is you and me being kind, being good. In other words, whom do we not need? God. What don't we need to think about? Forgiveness. Because it means sins. What sins? We're good. Right? We're kind. We're wise. What does God say? He says that's foolishness. God has a different plan. Paul writes, For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know Him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. I want you to listen to that last part again. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jesus once said a prayer during His life. He said a prayer to God the Father. He said, I... I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Matthew 11, verse 25. See, God was pleased to save people not through our wisdom, but through like a little child believing in the message of Jesus and shared with us. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. So we say, well, what's that foolishness? What's the foolish message of God that's preached? Maybe the best summary in the Bible is this. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Romans 3, 23 and 24. This is the foolish message of God. You and I, all people, we are sinful and we cannot save ourselves. And so Jesus Christ came into our world and He died on the cross to take away all of our sins. And it's those who believe in Jesus who have forgiveness and eternal life. And the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the problem. The problem is we we always want something more. We always want something more than than just the cross. Paul writes that the Jews demand signs and the Greeks look for wisdom. The Jews and Jesus say we're always demanding from Jesus signs. There was something you were going to remember for the sermon. Do you remember what it was that you were going to remember? In our gospel lesson, Jesus clears out the temple, and what do the Jews ask him? What's the sign that you're going to do? They were always asking for for signs. Has that changed? How often do you or I look up to God and say, God, show me a sign? In our city, Oral Roberts built his whole ministry about miraculous signs. Right? This was the message. The cross, it's not enough. Look at all of these signs. This is what it's all about. On the other hand, Paul says that the Greeks were looking for wisdom. You don't have to be a a, a history scholar. I bet you know some ancient philosophers from Greece. You think of some famous philosophers. I bet you've heard of some. Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, heard of any of those guys? They're all from Greece. Greece was known for its wisdom. There's, there was a Greek historian who said, on the streets of any city in Greece, you can find so-called wise men who have solutions to all of the world's problems. Does that sound familiar? And on every talk show, on every blog, you will find 
Wise men and women who have the solutions to all of the world's problems. And, and then you look at the Bible's message and you say, it doesn't make sense. We should cut those parts out like Thomas Jefferson did. That's, that's foolish. But listen to Paul's response. The Jews demand signs. The Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. What is at the heart of Christianity? It's Christ crucified. In the next chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul says, When I came to you, I resolved to know nothing except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Part of Christianity is that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. And we can admit that seems kind of upside down. It's not what heroes do. It's not what the Paw Patrol does. And yet it's a beautiful message. Because through his death on the cross, Jesus forgave all of your sins. Jesus proved God's gracious love to you. See, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You hear lots of different Christian messages, don't you? You see lots of different Christian churches. And maybe this is one way to test whether that church is really teaching the message of the Bible. It's to ask this. Are, are they focused on signs and wisdom? If so, stay away. Are they preaching Christ crucified? That's what it's all about. We preach Christ Crucified. Paul goes on to say, Christ crucified is it's a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. And we have to, we have to be, be ready to, to see this, that even the cross of Christ can be a stumbling block that pushes people away from God. Paul says the cross is a stumbling block to Jews. The Jews in Jesus' day were looking for a powerful Messiah who would set them free from the Romans and make Israel great again. And so when they saw Jesus die on a cross, what did they think? That's it. No thanks. It seems like a lot of Christians in America are looking for a, a powerful Savior who will destroy our enemies and make Christians important again. Watch out. Because when you look at the cross of Jesus, then what are you going to see? it? No thanks. Christ crucified was a stumbling block to the Jews and it was foolishness to the Gentiles. The Apostle Paul once had the chance to, to preach to the wisest people in Greece. He was in the city of Athens and they let him stand up and preach to the Areopagus, the wise people of Athens. And it, it went pretty well until Paul said one thing. They were listening until he said one thing and then they stopped him. Do you know what he said that made him stop him? Jesus rose from the dead. The moment he said that Jesus rose from the dead, they began to sneer at him. This is in Acts chapter 17. Somebody rising from the dead? It's foolishness. There's a way we talk about that in the United States, a really cool way. You know what it is? It's YOLO. You know what YOLO means, right? You only live once. YOLO. Right, you're, not, you're not that cool, I guess, huh? <laughs> what is that saying? You only live once. What's that saying? This life is all there is. Right? Just live it up now. doesn't matter what you do. Live however you want to do because there's nothing more. Right? There's no resurrection. There's no eternal life. Come on. It's foolish. YOLO. You only live once. Here's what Paul says. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews, foolishness to the Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. What Paul wants you to know is that Jesus is everything that everyone is looking for. Jesus is the power of God. If someone is looking for signs and miracles, Jesus did all sorts of signs and miracles in his ministry. 
turned water into wine. He calmed storms on the Sea of Galilee. He fed 5,000 people. He, he raised himself back from the dead. Jesus is the power of God. And if you're looking for wisdom, wow, listen to what Jesus preached during his ministry. He taught about loving our neighbor. He taught about putting God first. He taught about living with love and humility to, to those whom God has called. Christ is the power of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. Jesus is everything that everyone is looking for. Because you see, the the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. If you're going to follow Jesus, get used to saying this, I'm a fool. If being a fool means believing in Jesus, I'm a fool. If being a fool means worshiping a God who died on a cross, I'm a fool. If being a fool means confessing that I'm sinful and I can't save myself, I'm a fool. If being a fool means clinging to the cross of Jesus, I'm a fool. See, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Jesus loves you. Jesus forgives you. How can you be sure? The cross. We preach Christ crucified. Never be ashamed of the foolishness of the cross. Amen. Amen. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, you have to admit that when we really think about the message of your word, to, to our human thinking, it sounds foolish. It sounds foolish to think that we can't just be good enough on our own. It sounds foolish to think that you, God, became a man and died for us. It sounds foolish to think that at the center of our faith is a cross. And yet your wisdom is not the same as our wisdom. You chose to save us in a way that would point to to us not to wisdom but to faith. To faith in you and what you've done for us. Dear Jesus, help us never to be too wise to believe in you. Help us never to get so intelligent that we think that we don't need a Savior. Keep us like those little children you mentioned in the Bible. Keep us as humble believers in you. The world calls us fools, then maybe we fools for you. Help us never to be ashamed of the foolishness of your cross. In your name we pray. Amen.